Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason Pizzino. Let's have a look at what we're going to cover in today's video. Bitcoin cryptocurrency news update and the bell curve adoption theory. We checked this out briefly in yesterday's video on Ethereum in particular. Check that video out after this one today. Reason being is I think we could be set for the biggest bull market in cryptocurrency history. No, I'm not trying to give you any more hopium. I'm only looking at the amount of dollars coming into the market to push us to the biggest levels of all time. So let's have a look further in a moment. But first, warning, scammers are in the comments. There are new scams coming out now with people posting their cryptocurrency addresses. Stay away from those as well. I won't send you my WhatsApp, Telegram or email address in the comment section. All official links that I talk about in the video are in the description only. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you find some value from the video and hit the bell notification icon if you haven't already. YouTube has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content throughout these bull markets, especially at critical times. So if you want to see this content, make sure to hit the bell notification icon. And if you do find some value from the video, consider hitting the like button as well. It's the easiest, fastest, cheapest way to support the channel and watch till the end if you can. There's a lot of information throughout the video. I should have the timestamps in the description down below and that also helps out in the YouTube algorithm with how much the video is being watched. Charting software that I use is TradingView. Again, a link in the description. Some people ask, that's where it is. Follow me on Instagram if you like. Uh, I post my cryptocurrency retirement fund updates. It's currently at around 170,000 again today. Started around 26,000 in 2020. So if you want to follow that, then check me out on Instagram. Reminder, I've got my course coming out this month. This one is about trading. So it's swing trading, how to beat the markets. And this is for long-term investing in the markets, not only cryptocurrency, but of course, any market because we look at technical analysis. And the whole idea with the course and the membership is that we are going to continue shifting through the markets to increase our portfolios. So if you're interested in that, consider leaving your email address on my website. There'll be a link to that in the description as well. And you will get a healthy, discount once it's released next week. All right, guys, let's have a look at the agenda for today. News and the bell curve adoption theory. Next, forecasts and trading psychology, which we tend to cover in every video. Biggest part is up here, not necessarily on the computer, all in the mind. Technical analysis, price levels to watch. I'm gonna look at the Bitcoin dominance as well and give us some price targets there because of the double top. Uh, actions we can take to be profitable along the way. And lastly, the lessons only for serious long term financial investors. Of course, we're not here to be scalping the markets. This is long term moving money around to continue building that wealth. So on to the news. First thing I've got here is the bell curve. Now let's have a quick recap of it. If you haven't seen it before, this is what it is here. Essentially, I'm thinking we're somewhere in this early majority. And within the early majority is the most amount of people entering the market before the late majority hit and the laggards. Of course, this is 50% here, but most of the gains have been made through this area. Obviously, if you got in with the innovators, massive gains now. Early adopters, that may have been last cycle, the 2016-17 cycle, and we're potentially in this early majority. And that's what I wanna have a look at today with the news articles to give us some idea of maybe why we're there. Just a little quote on the bell curve adoption theory. The process of adoption over time is typically illustrated as a classical normal distribution or bell curve. The model indicates that the first group of people to use a new product is called the innovators followed by the early adopters, etc., etc. So just recapping that, the whole idea is that the most money that pours into a market is through these areas here. These guys aren't pouring in a ton of money uh, relative to the overall market caps. However, they're gonna get the biggest gains should this technology succeed. So that's where we're looking at these areas here. There are still big gains to be made and the most amount of money to come in here. That's the theory. Let's have a look at how much a US dollar is worth. 2,848 sats. And you can see over time, the US dollar has become worth less and less. Quick look at the fear and greed index. Remember, we're looking at this for our market sentiment. 75, where we currently sit. Yesterday's video, we're around 79. So yeah, here we go, 78 is where it ended up at the end of the day. And last week, we can start to see these numbers drop now, 83 and 88. So if we were charting this, you can see the trend is heading down because the extreme greed 
was around 93 to 95 and we're seeing that drop over the last few days and week. Jeanette Yellen says she's concerned about illicit use of cryptocurrencies. Chainalysis finds it's only 0.34% of transaction volumes connected to crime. Now the link to Chainalysis report is also right here. If we click on finds, brings us up this article here. Uh, all the details are through here. It's almost negligible and they find that criminals uh, preferring to use cash to launder through their traditional methods. So it's probably another reason why they're trying to take out cash and then put us all onto digital currencies. As we've heard before, the CBDCs are coming out, so the central bank digital currencies. And so if you haven't got yourself prepared, those could really destroy your lifestyle. Basically, if we can take a page out of China's book and they are tracking everything that their citizens do, we don't want that to happen in our Western societies, or at least I don't, I'm not sure what your views are. If you want to track everyone and what they're doing and stop people from doing certain things, maybe move to China and see how it works out for you as a test, and then come back to the West and just enjoy the freedoms that we still currently have here. So if we're going through this route of uh, digital currencies, make sure you're taking measures to hold and look after your own wealth as opposed to it being on a government backed system. We can get into more of that, but that's probably for another video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about that as well. I know it's a very hotly debated topic. Let's move on to how the markets can continue to boost from this point, possibly after a little pullback. Biden, we've all heard this before, $1.9 trillion to come into the markets. Where is it going to go? Most people think it's probably going to go into the markets. Let me know if you think it's going to go elsewhere. But if you think it's going to go into the markets, leave a comment down below and you can see from the majority of people what they're thinking and then we can use that as market sentiment as well. This one's interesting. Advisors allocating crypto in clients' portfolios rose by 49%. So this is just a play with numbers because out of all advisors, number of advisors allocating to cryptocurrency in clients' portfolios rose from 6.3% to 9.4%, but when you take that 3.1% out, it is at about 49%. So about 50% increase on the 6%. Playing with numbers here. So that's pretty much what they're saying here. Bitwise Asset Management said 81% of its financial advisors reported they had received a question from a client about crypto in the past 12 months, compared to 76% the previous year. So it's only up slightly, but the advisors are now advising a hell of a lot more, which is why I'm going back to this bell curve theory to think maybe we're here, but we could also be here. Join when there is plenty of help and support. Are we in plenty of help or support for the late majority or are we still in the early majority where they're joining when there is a productivity gain yet to be seen? So maybe we're even still in early adopters and they're joining when they perceive a benefit. Like this is just a perceived benefit that Bitcoin can actually solve some problems in the world. It's not used in that way just yet. It looks like we're getting there. So maybe we're even still in early adopters and we'll see this next boost through early majority really skyrocket the prices, maybe to some uh, percentage gains like we have seen in previous bull markets and we don't end up going on a diminished values return. Let's move on to the next article here. Oh, this is a little meme. You guys may have seen this before. I told him to buy Bitcoin and he said his financial advisor advised him not to. Remember that? So looking at the financial advisors, now telling them to adv advising their clients to buy cryptocurrency. This was the old meme that went around 20... 17, a hell of a lot when everything was skyrocketing. Funny how times change. Next article, BlackRock, new SEC filing lists Bitcoin derivatives as possible investment. What I'm taking from this is they have talked about it a hell of a lot. The multi-trillion dollar asset manager, biggest asset manager in the world, talking about Bitcoin a hell of a lot. Back to the bell curve maybe early majority, maybe late majority, maybe early adopters. It's still a perceived benefit and everyone is trying to FOMO into Bitcoin. So going back to the article here, uh, they uh, BlackRock have 7.8 trillion in assets under management. So that makes them the largest asset manager in the world. Fixed income, institutional asset manager, the largest in the world. Okay, nearly 8 trillion. This is bordering on hopium, but I promise you this is the home of no hopium. Hopium free. Nopium. Okay. BlackRock, all I can take from this article is if this goes through, which is what we'll track, then 
who knows how much they're going to put in. Eight trillion, it wouldn't have to be much, right? I'm not going to go down that path. If they just put in 1%, this would be X amount, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they only put in half a percent. Maybe put, they put in 0.1%. But I think they're probably going to put a little bit more than that. But let's wait and see what they actually come up with at the end of it. So that's BlackRock, nearly $8 trillion. Now, the next article I want to have a look at is around Bitcoin's energy consumption. The reason I'm bringing up this now, it's not really if any, anyone doesn't really care at the moment, but as we get closer to the peaks, this sort of news always comes out a hell of a lot heavier saying, this is a waste, Bitcoin's a waste, it's never going to catch on. So just be prepared for these articles that come out. I'm looking at this now because we're not at that stage yet. We're not at that stage where they're trying to throw fear around how much energy is used from Bitcoin. So take a look at this article a little further down. So complaining about energy consumption without first comparing it to the energy consumption of gold mining, financial system, government, courts, military selfies, or watching the Kardashians, you purchase the electricity, there is no moral electricity police that weigh in on your subjective usage of that energy. So if you're gonna complain about energy usage, look at everything else that's going on first. Governments, yearly cost. Am I gonna get this number right? 27.6 thousand billion? Is that in the trillions? I'm looking at 4.5 billion cost for Bitcoin mining. Now the energy used is only 183 million gigajoules. I say only, because it's one of the lowest out of any of these figures here. Banking system uses a hell of a lot more. The governments use a hell of a lot more energy, but obviously because they're made up of more people. Paper currency and minting are less than Bitcoin. Gold recycling is less energy, but costs a hell of a lot more, costs almost 10 times more. And gold mining obviously costs, what, 20 something times more but the energy usage is double and a half more than Bitcoin mining. So overall, Bitcoin mining isn't so bad when we compare it to governments, banking systems, gold mining. Let's reduce banking systems and government and then worry about Bitcoin mining. These are the biggest energy suckers and costs that all of our time goes to. All of our taxes go to these things, go to the banking system, go to the governments. If we can reduce that and make it more efficient, then we'll worry about Bitcoin's minuscule 4.5 billion in yearly costs. Quick look at the headline here. Crypto derivative surge, Bitcoin options open, interest climbs to 9.6 billion. So still more interest coming through. Not too concerned with anything that's going on with these recent dips on Bitcoin. There's a hell of a lot of interest going on, whether it's ETFs coming on board, whether it's options, whether it's family offices coming, whether it's like we just saw with BlackRock, massive world leader institutions. I don't think we're there yet at the top, but the top will come at some point and people will get crushed. Now is not the time, obviously, in my opinion. Of course, this is no good for the Ripple price. McCaleb nets $400 million for selling XRP. McCaleb's gone on to create Stellar Lumens, uh, basically the same thing as Ripple. Sure, there are some minor differences. I get it, guys. But overall, it's basically the same thing. And he's created his own company. Now he's selling off his XRP tokens and has been for quite some time. Throughout 2020, he got around 411 million in profits from selling his XRP. That was uh, an estimate of 34 cents per XRP. So it says right here, received about 9 billion XRP when he left Ripple Labs. Funds were given to him as part of his involvement in founding Ripple with Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse. However, the parties reached an agreement to protect the value of XRP token and establish that McCaleb could only sell a specific amount of XRP per day. Obviously, it's a hell of a lot. And the recent dump that has uh, McCaleb has done to the market was around $5 million, as we can see in this article. Here it is. Valued at five million. Sale made by McCaleb was valued at five million. With a balance of 623 million XRP still available in his Taco stand address. 623, just for fun numbers, multiplied by the current value is about 30 cents. Cha-ching, $187 million of XRP. He can still sell onto the market progressively. So keep that in mind before you go dumping your funds into XRP. There is still a whale dumping his XRP. I'm pretty sure he has a lot more money than you have. So keep it in mind if you want to dip your toes into XRP. Last thing I wanted to leave on was MicroStrategy CEO could liquidate 200 million in Bitcoin on a Saturday. This isn't saying that he's going to do it this Saturday, 
but essentially they're using Saturday as it tends to have one of the lowest volume days and he believes that if he needed to he could sell it at any time but it doesn't look like he's going to do it at this stage right the only point here is saying that Michael Saylor who we all know or we should know from micro strategies has been buying Bitcoin all in 2020 has about a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and he's just saying that if there was a better asset that he could invest his money into, it wouldn't stop him from selling his Bitcoin and going into that asset. And I think that type of liquid mindset is probably a good thing for many of us to, to learn from, just to be a good investor. You don't want to get married to your ideas. We always talk about that. Don't get married to your coins. You want to hit it and quit it. At the end of the day, no one cares if you were holding the Bitcoin throughout the bear market. You care if, you want to, if you're going to be making the profits at the top of the bull market. So don't get married to them. That's the idea here. And that leads me on to our last pieces that we were talking about was our lessons moving forward. Bull markets can make you money, which is what we're in now, but bear markets can make you rich. So selling out as much as you can, as close to the top as we can, which is what we learn in the course, makes you money. But to become rich, we want to be buying up the lows and then selling at the highs. If we're buying on the, the breakouts or getting close to the top, obviously we're not getting the same returns as if we were buying the bottoms. So sticking around with the market long term, even after times get bad. I'm not saying leave your money in there, but stick around with the markets and continue to learn from them. That's going to get you a much better position come the next cycle. And these things take time. That's all it is about here. Stick with it and you'll continue to improve on your investing skills. Two more quick things I wanted to cover before we go and I'll do a dedicated video on Bitcoin uh, technical analysis coming up soon. Action, time to bank profits. Remember, the one thing I wanna leave you with here is don't get stuck on the delusional price targets. Be aware of these. 20,000 ETH might happen. I really hope a 20,000 ETH happens. I will be a squillionaire when that happens. But uh, we just don't want to get married to that idea. Remember, don't get married to it, hit it and quit it. Next thing is to lock up your cryptos or stable coins. If you want to bank some profits, you can put them into stable coins on things like crypto.com and get your 10, 12% per annum. So you got a grand in there, you're making 120 bucks a year. So for every grand, $120 a year, maybe $100 a year, depending on which tier you take out. Crypto.com, I've got a link to them in the description down below. Last thing was the technical analysis, and I really just wanted to focus on the Bitcoin dominance here. So let's take a quick look at that. Move this over. And all I'm looking at here is the price target. Now with uh, double tops, we're using a FIB extension. Top to the bottom, which is the trough, to the next top. And then we're looking at around 161%, 150% would be a good target. I'm looking between that 125% and the 161%. So around that 48 to 54% dominance. Currently, we're sitting at 65. So that could really lead to a massive altcoin season. The double top proves it. Uh, we, well, obviously, we're yet to get through these lows here, but a double top is a good bearish signal to get us there. So that's the Bitcoin dominance. One quick look before we go at the Bitcoin USD chart. I think it's tanking as I'm uh, making this video. Move it back to a day. And yesterday we saw a minor dip. We're still in the triangle pattern. Nothing has changed from here. I could get you on some hopium and different bits and pieces, but really what is the point? We're just in a uh, accumulation or distribution pattern. We don't know that until the end, but currently we're in our triangle and that's all there is. Only once we break from the triangle, we will get a decision from there. So keep watching the market. We're getting closer. Maybe we get a fake out. Maybe we get a move north. But like I've said all along, it would be lovely to see this market stay under its all time high for at least one to three months. Currently, we are getting closer to our one month. We are at 13 days, so only halfway there. Let's see if we can get all the way through February under these levels, get a few more scares out of the market, a few dips, get it close to this 27K level. That would be amazing buying opportunities, in my opinion, not financial advice, but of course, we're gonna to continue to track this along the way as it unfolds. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and found some value from it. If you did, leave us a like down below over here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell notification icon. If you want to get links to anything that I talked about throughout the video, they're in the description down below. So make sure you check those out. One in particular is for the course, which is coming up. First 100 guys get the massive discount. So leave your email address 
on my website and you'll be included in that first email out. That wraps us up for another cryptocurrency video. I've got daily videos coming out, so be sure to stick around on the channel. Catch you at the next one. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.